Good afternoon, everyone. This is the weekly MLOps demo for September 3rd, 2021. Um, as usual, all everything uh, that we do, we add the updates weekly on this uh, issue thread. So if you want to know what happened, what is happening around MLOps at GitLab, just subscribe to this issue and you will get notifications. Um, so going back to this week's, we had our first uh, conversation with customers. Well, it's not the first conversation at GitLab, but for me, it was the first conversation with a customer on MLOps. Uh, the two highlights over here for me were their biggest pain point is not having uh, notebook diffs. So because we already spoke about this on the previous uh, updates, but Jupyter Notebooks are a very weird file system. They are JSON file with lots of stuff inside. It makes it really hard to have uh, diffs and code reviews and things like that just within the, how they are. Uh, but it is possible to, to improve them. And, uh, and we'll be talking about this a little bit later, but this is one of the major uh, pain points. It's for this customer, it was a, a larger pain point than not having model, uh, model tracking or pipelines. No, notebook diff was their major pain point. And I've seen this a lot in the industry around already. Um, this customer, they use uh, Azure Databricks. Databricks is a very uh, large MLOps provider. So they were recently valued at $38 billion upon a 1.6 billion valuation at Series age. So it's, it's a very, very hot market right now. Uh, they're also with GCP. They also partner with GCP, Google Cloud. Um, and it's, very interesting for us to have good integrations with them. So going back to the Jupyter Notebook experience, the thing is not every, every data scientist will create models. Not every data scientist will use machine learning, but every single data scientist will work with Jupyter Notebooks or with our markdown. So, and especially uh, uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So making, a good experience for them is really important. Uh, allowing them to have full reviews will help them get closer to GitLab because what happens for data scientists is that they just use GitLab or GitHub or whatever tooling at the end of the, of the analysis that usually take two, three weeks and they make one commit. And it's just as storage. They use Git as a storage for work done. They don't use Git, GitLab, GitHub for discussing, for uh, improving, for quality. No, it's just like the storage. It's where they where analysis go to die, basically. So what we are doing here, uh, we are working a bit right now on some small quality of life improvements. So to get one up. So for example, now uh, the SVG images graphs they have the, the labels uh, properly. Uh, so images were too large, that were too large were overflowing and you couldn't see them. And now they are correctly, being correctly sized. Uh, images that were within the, the repository were not being shown. Uh, so the markdown would reference the image on the, uh, on the repository itself and it wouldn't show because uh, we are L uh, shenanigans and now it's displaying properly. So some small things here and there, uh, just uh, to get started and uh, get more familiar with the code base and, uh, and everything. But beyond that, we are also working on the diff. Uh, I think it's, this is extremely important. This was created so many times by so many users. Uh, I myself, when I was a data scientist, this was one of my major pain points with Git and uh, GitLab. Um, and our strategy here right now is we're gonna have the, we have a Jupyter Notebook over here. What are we gonna do? We're gonna convert this to a markdown file uh, and we're gonna diff the markdown file. So this conversion is, the user doesn't see this, but when we show the merge request, the diffs are gonna be on the markdown file. An example of the markdown file, this was a conversion used, uh, done with Pandoc. Uh, Pandoc is a universal converter. It converts from everything to everything. And it has this really, really good conversion for Jupyter Notebooks into Markdown. And although it's quite a large tool, 
uh, and a little bit too heavy to add as a dependency on Gitali and things like that, um, we should use this as our uh, benchmark almost. So for example, this is that same notebook converted into a, uh, a markdown. So you have here uh, the table and the table is over here. And it looks really well for diffing, this is great. So what we did, we started to work on this uh, repository uh, over here, uh, I find BHMD, we are implementing, uh, we're trying to implement the same things, but in Go so that it attaches better. And it's very small so that it doesn't add a lot of uh, overhead into the code base. So what we were able to do so far was um, we are already able to display, we create already a markdown with all the specs necessary with uh, all the inputs already done. Um, some things we need to, to fix uh, here and there. Uh, we also need to work a little bit, we start work now on the, uh, on the output, uh, how to display each one of the output types. Uh, and we don't expect to be able to display everything uh, uh, in the beginning. We wanna get a little bit better uh, than we are. Well, anything is a bit better than the current state because it's impossible to build any kind of code review. So we're gonna evolve little by little. Uh, we're almost done with a quick uh, setup of this tool to just push it. Uh, and then we're gonna start integrating and speaking with our colleagues on how to integrate this into, in, into, the, into GitLab itself. Um, additionally, we are uh, working a little bit with, uh, with capacitating are not capacity, but helping to, uh, creating resources so that our sales uh, colleagues can have better conversations about MLOps with, uh, with customers. A lot of questions come in. Our customers are starting to think about MLOps, but we don't, uh, our sales representatives, our sales colleagues, they're not, they don't feel uh, ready to have those conversations that, because it's really new. Uh, it's not the usual uh, scope of, of GitLab. Uh, and we need to be able to provide a little bit more of, of, of resources to them. So here we have a little bit of uh, problems that users face in the GitLab on, uh, on the GitLab on the MLOps space and the components that would be used to solve them. We don't have these components yet with GitLab. It is possible to eventually work on implementing them, but at least it gives a, uh, a, a mind map almost of what needs to be done. Um, we will also be working soon, like I said, uh, both Azure, Databricks, uh, both Azure and GCP uh, connect with MLflow. And I think it's MLflow is a tool to uh, track, uh, uh, tool to track models. So model versioning, uh, which one should be available which version should be the one in production? Uh, let's uh, track metrics for models. So it uses for it uses for those use cases, and it's very common. And it should a little bit work on how uh, we can integrate better. So uh, we'll be doing this soon as well. Uh, up next, we I'll be in holidays next week, so no update uh, next week. But uh, following uh, on the followed in one, we will continue working on the notebook diff, and we will working we work on the MLflow integration. That's it for this week. Uh, see you next time. <laughs>